I'd love to dive into like some effective ways for people to lift weights because there's so many different ways now that people are looking at on the internet or like in real life, there's exercise classes. There's things like Peloton that include some weights in their programs. Now there's different things to do at the gym. There's machines, there's free weights, there's lifting heavy, there's, you know, lifting to get tone, like all these things we've heard. What does the science actually say regarding the most effective way for women to train, to build muscle? So I'll put off the bat. It's really, really difficult for women to get bulky. And I think that's one of the stepping fears for doing anything outside of light weights. Because when we're looking at how women build muscle, it's a combination of estrogen and central nervous system. And estrogen is a driver for lean mass development, as well as how strong a muscle contraction is and how fast it actually contracts. It's not like testosterone where you have an impetus for massive anabolic responses to build and become really bulky. So when we're looking at resistance training, I always tell women, any kind of load is great. So if you're going to go from doing nothing to body weight, that's a step in the right direction. If you're going from body weight to some lighter dumbbell work, yeah, that's a step in the right direction. But we're always looking to challenge. So if you're in your 20s and 30s, you can get away with trying a lot of different things. But when you start getting into your late 30s, early 40s onwards, we have to be a bit more specific where we're not looking at working to failure because that's more of a metabolic stress. We're looking at lifting heavier loads to work on power and strength because we lose that rapidly when we start having a flux in our hormones. So when I'm working with women and trying to get them to understand that there's a whole bunch of different things we can do, if we want to look at working on power and agility, we need to do things like contrast training. We need to do some plyo work maybe a pyramid scheme and periodize that way. But when we get into our late 30s, early 40s, we have to really look at power-based training. And it's scary for women because they're like, wait, I've not been in the weight room. I don't know how to do compound movements. What if I have never done anything before? How do I work my way into that? It's like, we phase you in, right? We look at how you move. We do a lot of mobility, make sure you're not going to get injured. And then we start adding load. We're looking at how are we improving our overall physique, yes, but also that physiological response for longevity. You know, some people will say, you know, just in the training phases, right, of training, you know, the body differently, that it can be better to train for hypertrophy initially to build some foundational muscle before doing things like lifting heavy weights and doing more like strength focus. Do you think that you know, somebody who hasn't been doing a lot of resistance training should start on something like machines, some light dumbbells and stuff to build some muscle before doing things like these compound movements and explosive movements like you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. And it's not about building the hypertrophy, like muscle tissue itself. It's that neural pathway that we want. And when you first start lifting, be it machines or dumbbells or free weights, you get that neural pathway. And that's what we're after. We're after those motor patterns. Once you have really good motor patterns and some strength, then you can start making it more compound and more complex. Yeah. I mean, something like Planet Fitness. It's amazing because it's opened the doors to resistance training to so many people who never otherwise would have stepped into a gym. But for people who are beyond the machines, it's like, I don't want to go there. I want to find something that's different. So there is that that open door for so many people when we're looking at, can I use machines? Can I use dumbbells? Yeah, absolutely. But we want to really look at how we move and we go sit to stand. What's a great move for sit to stand? It's not using a machine. It's like doing a back barbell back squat or we're doing a front squat, something to that effect. And so what would you say are the, like once somebody builds baseline level of neural adaptation like you're talking about, what are the top exercises you think people should focus on? Yeah, I think it varies. I always like to look at it as if you have three days a week in the gym, we do a squat focus on one day, we do a push pull overhead motion another day. And then the third day we're doing all posterior chain work. And you can vary the exercises within those but it's all in planar movement. And are we 
doing some plyo work in a squat focus? Are we doing some uniplanar work on when we're doing our posterior chain? So there's, like I said, there's lots of different exercises that you can do, but we look at it as those are the three, I guess, ideal areas and motions that you want to work on. If somebody's going to the gym three days a week, like what should their time in the gym look like? Let's just say somebody only has like 45 minutes to an hour. Like, how should they break that down when they get in there? Well, how old are we? I would, let's just say somebody who's like 35 to 45. Okay. So if we have a 35 to 45 year old woman who's going into the gym and say it's a squat focus day, you go in and you do maybe a two minute warm up of sorts to get your heart rate up. And then you get into some mobility exercises. And so all up, that might be maybe 10 minutes worth of work. And then we go into something like a five by five or a pyramid scheme where you're going 10, eight, four, four, two, and they're getting progressively heavier. And that might be on the three or four minute. And then we finish off with maybe some dumbbell split squats and then some mobility and then you're out of there. So all up, you're in there maybe 40, 45 minutes. It doesn't have to take a long time. Like I hear people, I don't have an hour and a half to go to the gym. I'm not asking you to go for an hour and a half. And in that session, if you're like, wait, I don't even have 45 minutes, do some mobility, do your squats, and then get out of there. And then you're in and out in maybe 25 to 30 minutes. 